Now, I'm delighted to introduce today's program host, Flora House. Flora is a volunteer extraordinaire, a retired nurse. She volunteers for a variety of organizations, including the Red Cross, the Friendship Line, and works on advocacy issues with AARP for caregivers, disaster preparedness, and livable communities. She is also a member of AARP California's Executive Council. Welcome, Flora. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Sophie. I'm so excited to be here. This is one of my favorite topics, getting out in the fresh air and communing with nature and the animals that, that help us just live better. Um, I'm thrilled to be here, and, and I want to really give a shout out because it's really a fun place to be in San Jose, a place that's now on my bucket list, the Happy Hollow Park and Zoo. So my question to all of you that are watching us and listening right now, and please put your answers in the chat is, what's your favorite animal and why? Well, let me tell you about mine. I grew up in the Bronx. I grew up with the Bronx Zoo many, many years ago. Animals are so much better off in today's zoos than they were then, but I fell in love with the giraffes. I was small, they were big. I was gangly, they were graceful. They had their heads in the clouds and I couldn't imagine a happier animal than that. And so they certainly became my favorite. But let me check with Jeannie and see if we have any other comments in the chat before I tell you the closing of why they continue to be my favorite. Jeannie, any well, interesting well, favorites in chat? We certainly do, Flora. Dolphins, rhinoceros, a tortoise. Excellent. And a oh, and somebody put a pygmy marmoset. <laughs> now I'll have to Google that and look it up. So before I go on and introduce our guests today, let me tell you why giraffes continue to be my favorite. So remember, I got introduced to them when I was a little girl. A few years ago, I had the luxury and the honor of going on an African safari. And as the Jeep drove up to the lodge, we stopped 10 feet from three beautiful giraffes and everyone in the Jeep sat there with our jaws open for at least two, three minutes until our driver said, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, you can take pictures. So it became very clear to me that giraffes are my spirit animals, even though I'm only five foot two. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for sharing and everyone else continue to put in there. So I want to introduce our two favorite individuals that are going to talk to us about what their zoo has to offer us. That's Caitlin O'Hara and Rhonda Nurse from the Happy Hollow Park and Zoo and the Happy Hollow Foundation. Welcome, Caitlin and Rhonda. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting you. us to participate in this. All right. So it's awesome that so many of you are from the Bay Area and several of you, uh, more than half of you, I think noted that you are aware of senior programs at your zoo. Uh, maybe that's even here at Happy Holler for those of you in the Bay Area. But if you're not familiar with us, I wanna start by giving you a brief overview. Uh, Happy Hollow Park and Zoo is a 16 acre amusement park and zoo located here in San Jose, California. Uh, we have about 150 animals of approximately 35-ish different species, as well as nine amusement park rides that range from classics um, like a carousel and a mini roller coaster to some that are more unique to us, like our very own Danny the Dragon. He's a dragon-shaped train. Um, and a cool ride that you'll see a little bit later called Granny Bugs, which is actually some, it's um, aimed at the younger population. It's little bugs with granny glasses on. They're super cute. They go around and up and down so the kids get a chance to ride. Uh, what we're here today is to share with you some of the programs that we offer specifically for uh, the communities that AARP serves. So I'm actually gonna pass it back to Rhonda for our first and probably flagship uh, senior community program. Thanks, Caitlin. I just want to say again, thank you so much for allowing us to be here today. Um, it is through partners like AARP that enable uh, our foundation and the Park and Zoo to put on a program like Senior Safari. And since so many of you are from the Bay Area, um, I imagine you know that San Jose is in Santa Clara County and, and home to some of the most world-renowned technology companies, Adobe, Apple, eBay, Facebook. And 
the population of Santa Clara County is almost 2 million people. According to the most recent census, about 14% of this population is aged 65 and older. So there's definitely uh, an audience for senior programming. Um, Happy Hollow Park and Zoo is a beloved community asset, which is owned and operated by the city of San Jose. And Happy Hollow Foundation is the nonprofit 501c3 organization that is celebrating its 65th anniversary this year as a partner of Happy Hollow Park and Zoo. I wanted to tell you just a little bit about the foundation and why Senior Safari is so important to us. The foundation's vision is to foster pride and involvement so that Happy Hollow Park and Zoo remains a community asset that is highly valued and accessible to all. And we achieve this through supporting conservation, education, and play through innovative programming and strategic fundraising initiatives. It is this part of accessibility that really brought Senior Safari to the Park and Zoo. It's with partners like AARP and our title sponsor, Kaiser Permanente, that enable us to run a program like Senior Safari. So what is Senior Safari? Well, let me tell you what Senior Safari is all about. It is uh, taking it outside, just like the theme for AARP this year. It is a program for anyone aged 50 and older to come to Happy Hollow Park and Zoo for free one day a month to get free parking and to explore the park and zoo, but it's more than just exploring the park and zoo. We try to create uh, an environment where there's a variety of enriching, ac enriching activities and community resources that are available beyond what the park and zoo has to offer. Of course, the program takes advantage of our traditionally sunny weather. It's an outdoor program and it runs once a month and we're about to launch our new series next month in May. So besides what the Park and Zoo has to offer, I wanted to tell you about each one of these photos. Go ahead and go back, Caitlin. We have hula hooping, tai chi, square dancing. We have a petting zoo where you can get close contact with our goats. In the far bottom corner, there's a 10,000 step challenge that you can follow a path through the Park and Zoo and get your exercise for the day. And then the other, the last corner is sometimes we have in uh, exercise enthusiasts and instructors to teach us how we can exercise even if we don't all have the same mobility. Next slide. Um, of course, we do have fun things like the keep around carousel and you can see it's for anyone. Um, there's, there's other paths throughout the park. What's so beautiful about the park is that we integrate nature as a means to get from point A to point B. And so there's all kinds of paths to get lost on and explore. One of my favorite things about Senior Safari is in the past, we've actually had a watercolor instructor. And this picture is so beautiful to me because you can see how the watercolor instructor is actually assisting our senior and participating in the activity. And then lastly, we have wonderful tours throughout the park and zoo that give you a little bit more of an in-depth knowledge of the exhibits and the animals besides what you can do on your own. At the core of this program, of course, is accessibility. And one of the ways we achieve accessibility for our seniors is we do community outreach in three languages. As you know, the Bay Area is a very diverse community. And so we market in Vietnamese, English, and Spanish. Another way that we promote accessibility is this program is free. And, and to us, that is the most important part of this program, which means everyone should be able to take advantage of this. We um, use a, a passport program where you can get a card once you register and it allows you to come into the park on senior safari days very quickly and efficiently, but it also allows us to collect data so that we know who we are serving in the community and who we need to do a better job of outreach to. And in fact, what's happening right now at the entry plaza of the park and zoo is our pre-registration event. And um, yesterday we had over 165 people come to pre-register just yesterday alone. 
So that's super, super exciting to, to us. Um, some more data that I wanted to share with you is just to show that there is an actual appetite and demand for this program, which actually started in 2018. And at that time, we served the most 200 people in May of 2014. But as you can see through the years, there's these totals. We went from serving 1,000 to almost 2,000 to 2,500. And at the height, pre-COVID in 2019, 3,469 seniors were served. And that's just incredible. Last year in 2022, we are coming back strong with October, the last day of our program, serving an all-time high of 735 seniors. Um, so we're getting close to those pre-pandemic numbers. And this year, we really hope to just go way beyond that. Um, and so far, so far, so good. I think the last thing I really wanted to share with you is how important Senior Safari is to our actual participants. So we have some amazing quotes in their own words. The first one reads, it's a pleasant way to get my 10,000 steps and I enjoy seeing other seniors out having fun and enjoying the morning. Another quote, here's Danny the Dragon, our signature, signature ride. This person says, I love Senior Safari because I relive my childhood and of course, riding Danny the Dragon. And you can see the seniors from last year waving, riding Danny the Dragon. And the final quote, uh, playing on the play structures, slides, climbing ropes, roller coaster, I felt like a kid again. And just here's a snapshot of yesterday's excitement, people lining up to pre-register in, in anticipation of the start of our program in May. Um, everyone received a free t-shirt. The color this year is purple. Pre-registration is open all week. So if you are in the Bay Area, you're welcome to come down anytime between 11 and 3 p.m. the rest of this week to pre-register. Um, if you're not able to come this week, you can always register on the day of any program. Here's the series schedule so that you can mark your calendars. Again, if you can't come and pre-register this week, come any day, May 25th, June 22nd, July 27th, August 24th, September 28th, or October 26th. And you can come, register, get your access card, and then come to as many senior safaris as you like for free. And just a note, if you can only come to one, mark your calendars for July 27th, because Sophie told me that AARP California will be there in person tabling out the event. And of course, if you're not in the Bay Area, but you do have a local zoo and you're interested in the Senior Safari Program, take this idea to your local zoo and your community and, and get this going in your area because it is a wonderful program. Thanks, everybody. We will take your questions after it, Caitlin. I'm going to stop sharing for just a moment so you can all see my face before I go into the next section. My name is Caitlin O'Hara. Again, I'm the Conservation and Communications Manager at Happy Hollow Park and Zoo. Uh, and my history is actually in zoo education. So I'm gonna show you uh, some of the programs that we run year round to serve that senior community. So Senior Safari is our big one from May through October, but it's important to us to be able to serve that community all year round. So let me show you just a few of those other programs that we offer. All right, starting with Sensational Seniors, which is our a natural carryover of Senior Safari. So Sensational Seniors runs the opposite season to Senior Safari, so November through April. Um, and it's a smaller group and more structured program than Senior Safari is. So it is a program that you do have to register in advance for, and it is led by our wonderful education department. 
Uh, so you can see some of the activities that go on during a sensational seniors program here in these photos. Uh, they always include a tour of parts of the zoo. So you get to get out and walk around a little bit, get some fresh air, get some exercise. Uh, the participants always get to meet one of our education animals. You can see this is one of our box turtles here who this participant is getting a chance to meet and touch. Um, and then there's always a theme to the program and there will be activities to fit that theme. Uh, so we have our groups hanging out in the classroom here. In this photo in the top left, this theme was based around animal enrichment or what you might call the toys that we give animals, the things that we add to their exhibits to keep their brains and their bodies healthy. So the red ball here that this participant is holding is actually a Jaguar toy. That ball came out of the Jaguar exhibit. Our Jaguar Sophia actually got to play with that. And if you look close, you can see some of the teeth marks on there. It's a very sturdy plastic ball to survive a Jaguar's teeth. Uh, this program also includes a light breakfast and it is register, uh, excuse me, it is a program you have to register for, which means there is a fee, uh, but we keep it as affordable as possible. I believe this season registration was only $12 per person. We do have a couple of adults only programs as well that span a wider age group. So we offer paint nights at Happy Hollow, uh, both a teen paint night for ages 13 to 17 and an adult paint night for anybody 18 or older. Uh, there are always snacks. We have a mocktail of the evening and then our featured animal. So these photos here, you can probably tell we had one of our snakes as our star animal for this one. Um, and we have several uh, quite talented instructors on our education team. So this is Christina here, who's teaching these uh, participants how to paint a corn snake. And then um, you can see some of the examples here. You can really go wherever you want. It looks like this participant decided she wanted to paint a chicken, which is totally fine. So we give you the animal model. We give you the tools. We give you some instruction, as much help as you'd like, and you get a chance to uh, create your own masterpiece. Um, and I can speak to, even if you are not artistically inclined, as I don't consider myself to be, uh, the instructors are great and they can help you get the basics down to get um, a really cool creation of your own on your canvas. And then we also have a couple of programs that are great for um, intergenerational groups. So Tales for Tots is our program for toddlers. It's for children ages one to three and any adult. It can be mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, um, nanny, babysitter, any adult and child who want to learn, um, learn about nature and spend some time together while doing so. These programs include some sort of craft. It looks to me like these two are making a pair of cardboard tube binoculars to potentially go bird watching. Uh, this class up here was about fish. So they're counting and sorting their goldfish up here. And then down at the bottom, Tails for Tots will also get to meet an animal. It looks like just coincidentally, this class also met one of our box turtles those days. And finally, a new class that we added this year in the 2022-2023 season is called Family Fun. So while Tales for Tots was restricted to toddlers, Family Fun is for any age of children and adults. And it's, uh, I believe you register as a family of four people, usually two adults, two kids, uh, but the registration is for a group and then any combination. So it could be uh, a parent, a grandparent, and a grandchild. It could be two grandparents and a parent and one child, however you would like to do it. Uh, this program is designed for families to come together, learn together and get to do some cool activities together. Uh, you can see they're working on a craft down here in the corner. They got to build some animal enrichment in this class as well. Here's a family showing off their project here. And then we brought out, if you look very closely in this top right photo, there's an animal right here, if you can see where my mouse is pointing. And here's a close up. So this is actually one of our African pygmy hedgehogs. So the family's got a chance to build um, enrichment for the hedgehogs. And then we actually brought the hedgehog out to the class and gave them a chance to check out the enrichment that they did. Now I'd like to leave you guys, I think we have some time, uh, with this is just a short five minute video, a tour of Happy Hollow Park and Zoo. So for those of you who have not been here before, 
or if you have and maybe haven't gotten a chance to see all of the park and zoo before, uh, I wanted to leave you with just a little taste of what we have here that what uh, what might intrigue you to come visit us. So here we go. Hi, everyone. My name is because it features animals there um, and even conservation messaging. A park ride that people of all ages can enjoy along with your conservation messaging. Now here at Happy Hollow, we have two zoo areas as well as another rides area with eight more rides beyond this carousel. So we're gonna start with what we call the zoo in the hollow. Follow me down the path this way. So the zoo in the hollow is at the bottom of what we call the crooked bamboo path that we just walked down. And down here in the zoo in the hollow is where you'll find some of our more exotic animals. So our jaguar is down here. Um, we have an African tortoise down here. We have the red pandas down here. So I'm going to show you a few of our animals that live down here today. Let's start with our capybaras. Let's see if they're home. They're right over here. We have two female capybaras at Happy Hollow Park and Zoo. You can see them right over here. Uh, they arrived here in the fall of 2022. They are the largest rodent in the world and they're native to the Amazon rainforest in South America. All right, let's see if there's just a few others we can learn about today. We'll see one more animal right around the corner. All right, this is one of my personal favorite animals in the zoo in the hollow. These are our Chicoan peccaries. They were transferred here just last year around the same time as the capybaras. And they're another South American species. So we've done our best uh, to recreate their natural habitat. We have some topography, we have grasses, we have trees. And then of course on cold days, rainy days, they have a shelter here where they can go inside to warm up. Or if it's too hot, it might be air conditioned. All right, follow me this way. We are gonna check out our rides area next. So let's go up the hill. So the Five Point Forest is the entrance to the amusement park section of Happy Hollow. Uh, we have eight rides back in this area that range from uh, a roller coaster, the frog hopper ride, or granny bug. So let's check out a few of them while we're here. Danny the Dragon is another of our most popular rides. You can see Danny himself behind me here. So it's kind of like a storybook train ride. It goes around a track with all sorts of fun things to see while you're on the ride. And again, this ride is great for all ages. Uh, this is one of our rides that is even uh, wheelchair accessible. You can take your service dog on this ride. Literally anybody can get on this ride and enjoy a trip through Danny's magical trail behind me here. Danny the Dragon is not just a ride, Danny is also our mascot. So if you're here on a weekend day or for a special event, you might even see Danny walking around the park saying hi to all the visitors. All right, we have one more area of Happy Hollow I want to show you before we finish the tour. So follow me out of the rides area. We're going to go back towards the front gate. So our last stop on our tour today is the Zoo on the Hill. So the Zoo on the Hill is where you're gonna find our farm area. We call it Double H Ranch. We have goats, we have sheep, we have chickens, we have turkeys. So here at the barn, you'll find a couple of our older goats. Hey guys! Looks like they don't wanna come up to us right now, but they are actually, uh, if they choose, within touching range of visitors, you're welcome to give them a little ear scritch if they come up. There we go. So over here, you'll see our contact yard. When we have goats who are able to, they go out here while we are open and visitors can come right up close. They can brush the goats um, and they can interact with those goats. Now over here is the end of our tour. Off to the right is where our giant anteater habitat is. And off to the left is our red rough lemurs. And that'll take you back through the rest of the zoo on the hill and back to the entrance. So thank you all so much for joining me on this virtual tour today. Uh, we hope you'll come visit Happy Hollow yourself in person if you're in the area. Bye everyone. All right, so I hope most people were able to hear that at least. I hope that gave Bye. you a little taste of Happy Hollow Park and Zoo. We'd love to have you come visit. Uh, thanks for joining the presentation today and we're gonna throw it back to Flora. Thank you, Caitlin and Rhonda. I am so ecstatic. I just wish that San Jose was a little bit closer to Indio so I could hop on over. So first of all, let me take this off my screen. So Greeny, 
I know that we have a lot of comments and I'm sure there's some great questions in there. Can you read a few for us so that Rhonda and Caitlin can educate us even further? Certainly. Uh, park, there was a question about parking and is it free parking um, to start? So for Senior Safari to pre-register or to attend the events, parking is free. Thank you to Happy Hollow Park and Zoo. When you want to visit the park and zoo, I'll let Caitlin explain. Yeah, on a regular day, uh, we do have machines in the parking lot and parking is $10 for a day. And that's because we're actually part of a city of San Jose park. So all city of San Jose parks charge a parking fee. But as Rhonda mentioned, we are able to waive it for senior safari, which is fantastic. Yeah, thank you. And the question about registering online, can you register online for a senior safari? Not at this time, you cannot, but anytime in person on one of our event dates or this week. Regist yes, I just got saw a question pop up. Registration all week at what time is from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the main entry plaza of Happy Hollow Park and Zoo. Okay, great. Are you still offering programs like the beehive management? Ooh, so um, our bee workshops, we only scheduled two this year, and it has to do with our amazing volunteer who teaches them. He's uh, working slowly towards retirement. One of those people that you never know if uh, they'll actually fully retire. He's already retired from working, but beekeeping is like his second job. Uh, but he's trying to cut back a little bit. So we offered one workshop uh, two weeks ago, I think, and we're offering another one next week, which is full already. Wow. Uh, there is a possibility that we will add more later this year, but I don't know that for sure. Uh, the info is on our website. It always gets updated if we add more. Thank you. Uh, paint night. So what what's what's that about? And how yes. much? Is how much is it? Paint yes. night is. I actually have it up. It is thirty three dollars per person. That includes all the materials you need as well as some snacks. If you happen to be a Happy Hollow member, you do get a 10% discount on the program. Um, and it's just intended to be a fun, artistic evening. It's a two hour program. Uh, so you come in, get your snacks, meet our animal of the night, and then you get started with your paints. Our teachers will get you um, the paint colors for the night. Everyone gets set up with their own palette, their own set of brushes. Um, and everyone has an easel and a canvas to work with. Um, and they've actually worked it out. So if you're not able to finish your art pieces in the two hours, we have tiny little plastic containers and they'll send you home with the colors of paints that you need to finish it on your own. Awesome. And do you still have a puppet show? Yeah, we do. Um, depends on the day of the week. During the weekdays, it's usually one show at noon. On weekends, we'll have two or three shows, depending on how many people we're expecting. It's usually noon, two o'clock, and either three or 4 p.m. Uh, that schedule is, so it's always gonna be on, we have a big programming board. When you enter Happy Hollow, it will all be right there. And we also update the schedule on our website every day. Uh, our main page is happyhollow.org. And if you click right at the top of our webpage, it says visit, that takes you to the page that has all of the schedules for the day. Excellent. And maybe as a last question, I think, uh, had there been any births, any animal births out at the hollow? I'm going to have to think about that one. Um, we had the last birth I can think of. I feel like I might be missing something, but we had a baby black and white rust lemur born three three years ago now. She was born in spring of 2020 while we were closed due to COVID. So that was a really fun story for us to be able to share out through social media that even though we're not open, we're still here. We're still caring for the animals. Awesome. Um, we may not have had any births, but we have had a couple of new animals move to our zoo recently. Uh, so I mentioned the capybaras in the video. Uh, we just brought in some new goats. So thanks to some help from Happy Hollow Foundation, Rhonda and her team, uh, we were able to retire our older goats. They're now in a behind the scenes grazing pen area. And the foundation helped us purchase um, what we call a loafing shed, um, basically just a, a big shelter for them so that if it's too hot, they have shade. If it's cold and rainy, they have shelter from that. And we brought in uh, half a dozen young goats that are currently they're learning how to be goats in a zoo with people. They're, they're quite energetic right now, let's put it that way. Uh, so the uh, public can see them right now, but they're not yet in the contact yard, uh, but you can see them over the fence. And then another uh, partnership with the foundation, we brought in four peccaries. The Chacon peccaries I mentioned arrived 
uh, just last November. And the foundation was a huge help in funding to get that exhibit done because that exhibit was a half to two thirds the size that it is now. And we actually removed an older exhibit that we weren't using anymore and expanded the Pecker exhibit to be able to accommodate these four new animals. So there's a lot of exciting things going on, even if it's not babies right now. Okay, well, one last question here for you gals. Is there parking included in registration for Sensational Seniors and Paint Night? Yes, uh, any education, that's a great question. Any education program that you sign up for, anything that you pre-register and pay for in advance also includes parking. You generally will get a parking pass emailed to you ahead of time from our education team. Thank you. Thank you, Jeannie, for uh, keeping track of our chat. Uh, Caitlin Aranda, I have a question for you. Okay. And that is, why is it so important for people, and especially us older adults, to connect with nature outdoors and the animals? For me, it's about it's about making that connection to a part of the world, a part of the planet that you might not otherwise get to see up close. Many of us will never get to go to South America and see capybaras or peccaries in the wild, um, but being able to experience them at a zoo helps you build a connection with that other part of the world, that other species. Um, and it's a big part of what we do for conservation. If people don't know that capybaras and peccaries exist, then they're not gonna know that they need our help and that their habitat needs our help. So it's about, it's about learning about what's out there. Thank you. So one of the things that AARP staff has mentioned is the special things she's seen certainly at the senior safaris and the look of joy and calm on the faces of the individuals, particularly the faces of the people who are caregivers, bringing their loved ones to the, to the zoo. And I will tell you that most especially we of this population, we've suffered some of the most socially isolated experiences during COVID. To have an opportunity to interact with other seniors with such an accessible environment that you've provided will go so far for the emotional and physical health of so many of us that I send you my kudos because it is really a very special thing. So thinking about all of that, thinking about how special it is for us and what you have brought to the table, which is remarkable. What are some of the special moments that you experience related to the zoo and these events? Laura, thank you so much, because that really is the heart of of the program is we know that seniors have been isolated due to COVID and this is an opportunity to be out into the community together to socialize and when we provide the other enriching activities we can teach seniors about health and what services are available um, and maybe they need rides so we have all kinds of sponsors and other organizations that do come in to teach about the services that are available in the community um, I think for me um, I am relatively new executive director for the foundation. I've been on board for seven months. And so I was able to attend the last senior safari of 2022, in which we had the highest attendance of all time. That's so over. to see the park and zoo filled with this population without any children, but to see that the energy and joy is equivalent it made me really happy and I jumped in and, and participated in the Tai Chi exercise and listened to the You Cool Ladies, which is a group of ukulele playing women. Um, it was just fun and joyful. And that's what's really special. Thank you. Caitlin, anything special you want to add in on that? With my background in education, I just love, I love seeing people make those connections, whether it's a toddler who sees a red panda for the first time, or a senior citizen who's getting to sh maybe share with a younger member of their family about some animal that they're really passionate about. Uh, we see that all the time at Happy Hollow, people who came here as a child and are now bringing their kids or even their grandkids here to Happy Hollow. So it's really special to see um, what we mean to the community and what we can offer the community from toddlers all the way through seniors. 
I, I have to second that. Um, you guys have provided an environment which allows us as we have fewer and fewer memories of our childhood to physically and emotionally tap into that, that joy that we had as, as young children. And so from the bottom of my Bronx Zoo heart, thank you. <laughs> Sophie, I'm gonna turn it over to you now. Great, thank you so much, Caitlin and Rhonda uh, for giving us a wonderful snapshot tour of the zoo and park and all the amazing programs that you offer. Um, I cannot wait to get out there myself. And as mentioned, we will be, AARP California will be uh, there at Senior Safari on July the 27th. And we hope to see you there. Thank you so much, Flora. Thank you so much, Vin and Jeannie. And thank you for being part of our program today. Our next program in June, Take It Outside, on Wednesday, June the 28th at 12 noon, we'll be featuring Salesforce Park and the Transit Center, a 4.5 acre park delight in the heart of San Francisco's downtown. Stay tuned for the, regis the registration link on that, and we hope that you will join us. Thank you for being with us today, and this does conclude today's program. Have a great day, everybody.